Hello and welcome to government class. In today's government class, we'll be looking at the advantages of indirect true and the disadvantages of indirect true. We'll be starting with the advantages. What are the advantages of indirect true? The first advantage of indirect true was the fact that a lot of traditional practices that were inhumane and wrong were criminalized and stopped. For example, the killing of twins. When indirect truth came to Nigeria, they stopped the killing of twins in Nigeria and other practices that were considered wrong and inhumane, they were stopped. So this is one of the major advantage of indirect truth in Nigeria. The second is the traditional, the traditional mode of operation were modernized and new policies were adopted to administer governance to the localities. So our pre-colonial systems of administrations that were already in place were modernized and new policies were adopted to administer governance to the people. So there were new things that the colonial masters added to our pre-colonial political systems of administration to make it more feasible, to make it better. And there were new policies that were adopted to administer governance to the people. The next is indirect rule was a lot cheaper than direct rule because direct rule would need a lot of British officials and a lot of funds and many other institutions that are to be in place. So indirect rule was cheaper than direct rule. That's another advantage. The next advantage is the fact that the traditional rulers were respected, they were given prominence and they were given respect. So the traditional rulers were recognized, they were given their the respect that they were supposed to they were recognized, they were given prominence, and the British officials respected them. But so that we don't mix things up, the British of officials did not respect them per se, because if they did not do what they wanted them to do, they would eliminate them or replace them. So it was more like they were under, they were under force. They, they did not do it of their own accord. So though it would look like the traditional rulers were recognized they were given prominence they were respected they did not do all of this on their own accord british um traditional rulers that went against the british for example jaja of okombo they eliminated him so they did not do this of their own accord but they did it out of we would not say but it was not of their own free will it was it was there was a little bit of force applied the British did not replace the, gov the culture of the people with their own. This is another advantage of indirect rule, the fact that the British did not replace the culture of, their peop of the people with their own. When we look more into the French, um, the policy of ass assimilation used by the French in their co in to colonize the people of Africa, we will see the fact that till date, there are people that have lost their culture, they have lost their identity, they have lost their language, and they are now behaving like Frenchmen because of the policy of assimilation used by the French people to colonize these people. So the fact that the British did not change our culture, they respected our culture, and they did not make us Englishmen and women, they and women, they made us, they left us to be the people that we are, the Awusas, the Yorubas, and the Igbos, they respected our cultures and traditions. And that's why we can still speak the Yoruba language today in Nigeria. We can still speak the Igbo language, whereas in some parts of Africa where direct rule was used or the policy of assimilation, they have lost their culture, they have lost their language. The next thing we'll be looking at is the disadvantages of indirect rule. Indirect rule made the chiefs become autocratic, greedy, ruthless, because the indirect rule system placed more powers on the traditional rulers than the traditional system had deposited in them. Unlike the Awusa political system of the Awusa pre-colonial political system of administration, in which the people, the Emir had um, total power was a highly centralized system of administration. We have the opposite in the Yoruba and the Igbo pre-colonial political systems of administration. The Oba was not all the power was not deposited in the Oba. The Oba had to share powers with the Oyo Messi, the 
Ogboni society and many more. So there was a system of check and balance in place in the Yoruba system of administration, but indirect you deposited more powers in our law things and in our obas than the traditional system had placed in them. So because the indirect you system has already placed so much power on them, they became greedy, ruthless, they became autocratic in their dealings with the people. So that was one of the disadvantages of indirect rule the fact that it placed so much power than our traditional system had placed in our traditional rulers and the fact that the traditional rulers misused this power and used it to their advantage is one of the major disadvantages of indirect rule in nigeria the second disadvantage of indirect rule in nigeria is the fact that the british needed the ignorance and timidity of the rulers and they used it to their advantage the the for for example the obas the alafins the emias they were not educated they did not have knowledge of the english language and they used the ignorance of these people to their advantage making them sign documents treaties that they did not even know what was written that they didn't even know what was what was in those documents they did not know the fact that they were selling their lands out to these people they used their ignorance they used the timidity of our rulers they used it to their advantage and this is one of the reasons why the elites and educated members of the society were sidelined. They sidelined the educated and the elite members of the society because they feared that they would question their policies. You know that education makes you know your rights. And then they know that these educated people, they know their right. They know that this thing we are doing is wrong. They know that we are not supposed to do things this way. So because of that, they sidelined the elite and the educated people of the society so that they would not question their policies. The next disadvantage of indirect is the fact that the chiefs were caught between serving the people as their representatives and obeying the British law. They put, their, they put our um, traditional rulers and our chiefs in a dilemma of do, do we perform our function of protecting the people, do we perform our function of respecting the people, or do we obey these British colonial masters, or do we obey the laws the British colonial masters are giving us? So they were in a dilemma, they did not know what to do. They were caught between serving the people and obeying the British law. And they mostly preferred to do the former because it led, and uh, they mostly prefer to do the former. They mostly prefer to obey the British, their British colonial masters to obey the British law. And this led to a lot of clashes between the chiefs, the traditional rulers and the people, especially in the eastern part of Nigeria. Because the, the, our traditional rulers, our chiefs, the Warrant chiefs and all, they were caught between serving the interests of the people as their representatives. They were caught between their, their major role, the major reason they are in power, to protect the people, to serve the people, and to obey the British law. And for the fear of the British colonial masters, they did the, they obeyed the British law instead of serving the people. And this led to a lot of quarrel, a lot of clashes between our traditional rulers and between the chiefs and the people. You are supposed to protect us. Why aren't you protecting us? Why are you obeying these people, the colonial masters, instead of protecting our uh, interests, instead of serving us as our representatives and especially in the eastern part of nigeria this caused a lot of clash between the chiefs and the people the next disadvantage of indirect rule is the chiefs the chiefs the traditional rulers and the emirs due to the benefit and autocratic model of governance they enjoyed they contributed largely to the delay in the constitutional development advocated for by the early nationalists the chiefs, the traditional rulers, the emirs, the Alaf, because of the fact that they enjoyed benefits and autocratic model of governance that was given to them, um, especially for the Alafins and the Obas and the Waran chiefs in the eastern side of Nigeria, the, because of the model of governance, the autocratic model of governance they enjoyed, because of the benefits they got from the um, British officials, because of the power that was um, placed in them by the indirect system of Nigeria, they, they, they delayed the constitutional development of Nigeria that was advocated for by the early nationalists.